Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, the one and only Strawberry Ice, down here in Ice Cave, bringing you sports from a west side point of view. All right, here's the rundown of today's show. Bearcats in action. Are they giving you gray hairs? I know they're giving me, giving me gray hairs. Dayton and also Xavier in action this past weekend, and the Cincinnati Reds finally had their first spring training game on Sunday, because Saturday's got rained out. Who knew it rained in Arizona? Apparently it does. All right, as I said, Bearcat fans, how many how many gray hairs do you have now? I, I, I'm sure after yesterday's game and after this last two months of Bearcat games, I've probably got some more. Bearcats pulled it out. They won 67 to 64. Jaron Cumberland, when the dude scores over 20 points, we win. He scored 24 yesterday. That finally snapped the overtime game uh, streak. We were, if we would have went to overtime yesterday, we would have set a record for the most <laughs> overtime games in a row. Luckily, that didn't happen. Now, Cumberland only went 3 of 11 from the field, but he was 16 of 22 from the line. So, he's, at least he got, he got some calls. I, 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 I'm so tired of watching some of these referees. Okay. Did you see, I can't remember the guy's name, the white guy for Wichita State that kept making shots. He's a good player. He had his first half. He had a breakaway dunk. He goes up. He doesn't jump high enough to dunk the ball. He gets hung on the rim. Jaron Kerblin goes by. Maybe he touched him on the shoulder. Maybe. That had no effect on him not jumping high enough to dunk the ball. But we get a foul. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Then, right after that, Jaron... Driving down the, actually not even down the middle lane. He's in the middle of the freaking court. He tries to cut over. That dude gets in his way, runs into him, and nothing's called. I'm like, that's a block. I'm like, these ref, I mean, the referees, we cannot get a call. It's it's obvious. <laughs> I mean, I try not to blame the refs, but and this is I'm upset about the refs on a game we won. Because it's just absolutely ridiculous the way they call stuff. I mean, a guy can get completely run over and he doesn't call anything. And you breathe on him. Two seconds later, he gets called. It's like, got to have some consistency in that. I mean, man. <sighs> All right. But Jared Carlin did get to the free throw line. Like I said, he was 16 of 22 from the line. He made his final free throw with 2.1 seconds left on the clock to put the Bearcats ahead for good. I mean, Wichita State did a last-second half-court heave that did not go in. That, oh, it, we can't have any, like I said, we can't have any easy wins. I mean, I knew that one was going to be hard. I mean, I did. I mean, the thing is, we had should have had two easy wins before that, but we didn't. But this is how crazy this year in college basketball is. It is. Joe Lenardi, before yesterday's game, had the Bearcats as the first four out. Now they jump all the way up to the number 10 seed. I'll take that. Now, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Because Kentucky, and I'm not a Kentucky fan, but one of my my viewers pointed this out to me, one of my berries. He said, yeah, you guys moved up to a number 10 seed. And he goes, they beat LSU and they beat Florida. And they dropped down to a number, from a number three seed to a number four seed. I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I'm just glad as right now we're in. Now, (laughs) we got a week off. Cumberland, Trey Scott, you guys, all you starters, go sit down in a jacuzzi and relax. Rest your bodies. Get your mind right because we got to go to Houston to get the biggest win of the season. In my mind, if we beat Houston and we win the regular season title, and we beat Houston at Houston, which Houston is already in. I mean, they're 22nd in the country. They are in. I personally think that gets us in. Now, we can't turn around and lose the Temple after that. But let's concentrate on the next game at hand, which is at Houston, which I really, I think it's going to be really hard for us to win. Okay, one, because Houston's really good. Don't get me wrong. They are, they are a very good basketball team. Two, they get away with a lot, I won't say a lot of fouls. Very physical play. How about that? 
they get away with more physical play than other teams. They, they get away with it like the Bearcats used to get away with it, with Huggins. They really get away with it. So going to Houston to win, they have got to be ready for a fight. Because Houston, they win, we lost, or they lost to us last year uh, down there. So, or, or I was up here, sorry, up here. Anyway, I'm sure they don't want to lose to the Bearcats at the end, end of the year again. So they're going to be ready for a fight and ready for a big, big test. Now, like I said, if they win that, I mean, they got to win the other two games. We're already in. This is according to Joe Lenardi. I, I know I'm always quote, quoting Joe Lenardi, but he's pretty good at what he does. So I think we're in. You got to beat Houston. If you win a couple games in the AAC tournament, that would be great. But yesterday was an unbelievable win. I haven't done this in the last couple of shows. But you guys ever looking for rental properties or a rental management company? Well, let me re recommend my friends at T Properties. You can check their website at out at tpropertiesllc.com for all your rental property management needs and your rental needs. All right, now, I'm on Facebook a lot, as you guys know, because maybe some of you found me on Facebook. And two of my favorite groups, one is Bearcat Country and the other one is Bengals Nation. Well, the guys who run that have decided to open up another uh, sports page called Reds Country. So if you guys want to go over there for some really good conversation and there's no bullying, we don't do that stuff, just good, fun conversation, check out the new Facebook group called Reds Country. Like I said, they are in conjunction with Bearcat Country and Bengals Nation. And I get to post my show on there without Facebook blocking me. So that's great for me. <laughs> All right, Xavier fans, I have not forgotten about you. Uh, Xavier took on number 12, Villanova. Offensive issues plagued Xavier. I think it was their lowest scoring game of the year. Villanova pretty much led from start to finish. Xavier was honestly never in it. They lost 64 to 55. Coach Travis, Travis Steele said that Villanova was more aggressive and played more physical than Xavier. Basically, it sounded like they wanted it more than Xavier did, which is kind of surprising because it was a packed house at Cintas. So, a little disappointing loss for Xavier as far as the effort goes. Hopefully, they'll ba bounce back uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock versus DePaul. Now, the Dayton Flyers, which I think is one of the greatest stories in the country. I mean, they're up to number six, number five, something like that. It depends on what uh, list you look at. But they beat Richmond, 87 to 79. Dayton led them by, they're up by 20 points. And then I think they like relaxed. I mean, this, you saw some of the highlights. Obi Toppin, that dude's going to be a lottery pick. He might be a top five, but he did a windmill dunk in a like, baseline drive and windmill dunked it. <laughs> it, wasn't a, it wasn't a fast break. It was a windmill dunk on a baseline drive during the game. <laughs> that was ridiculous. But Richmond tried to make a game out of it. They got it within eight points, and then Dayton pulled away for the win. Like I said, 87 to 79. Dayton's next game will be tomorrow, 7 o'clock, versus George Mason. So, I mean, I've said this before about the, I think, great college basketball area we have around here. Now that Northern Kentucky is a Division One program, which has been like that for, I think, four years now. And you got Dayton. I mean, honestly, Dayton. In this area, Dayton is the highest ranked team in this area. I'm talking from, if you want to go from Columbus to Lexington, to that area, Dayton's ranked higher than any of them. That's unbelievable. How in the world Obi Toppin ever got to Dayton, I don't know. <laughs> but that's great for them. But the Dayton Flyers, honestly, they could win this whole thing. I would be amazing because they have a very good shot at being a number one seed. Possible number one seed overall since uh, the number one and number two teams both lost this weekend. So college basketball is just, it's a crazy year. You get to be that top seed. I mean, I know Baylor was the number one seed, or number one team in the country, probably for the longest this year. Anybody's held it because usually beginning of the year, especially somebody got it and they lose it next week. I mean, Michigan State, I think, started the year at number one. They're not even ranked now. That's how crazy this college basketball season has been. But the Dayton Flyers, with that happening, they could win this whole thing. 
and when that happened, that's why I'm like, I don't see how you can keep UC out. I mean, they got to win. They got to do what they're supposed to do. But this basketball season is so crazy. I think it's going to be even harder for the committee to figure out what teams to put in and what teams to lose or not put in. It's it's going to be very interesting selection Sunday. We got, what, two weeks till then? It's going to be fun. That is my favorite time of the year. Yesterday, the Reds had their first spring training game. It was supposed to have been Saturday, but it rained, which I didn't even know it rained in Arizona. That's sarcasm. It barely ever rains in Arizona. But, of course, the first spring training game gets rained out. But the Reds took on the Chicago White Sox and lost 7-2. to They are at it again today at 3.05 versus Texas. Now, I had some... Uh, some conversations, interesting conversations yesterday when I was at B-Dubs uh, watching the Bearcat game. And uh, I think Reds fans need to, this is, this is about Freddie Galvis and the shortstop situation. Everybody's like, oh, we got to get a shortstop. We got to get a shortstop. I don't think Freddie Galvis is going to be as bad as everybody thinks. I mean, he's a good hitter. He's a very, he's a pretty good fielder. No, he's not as good as Iglesias, but dude, Iglesias is a gold glove shortstop. And people, people who said we should have signed him, he had his best year offensively of his entire career. So that is hard for me, and I think for the Reds, to give him a whole bunch of money because he's only done it once. And there's been years upon years upon years in professional baseball, Major League Baseball, that he hasn't done it. So... I don't have a problem with them going with Freddie Galvis. I would have loved them to get Jose Lindor, but I don't think uh, the Indians, it doesn't tell you the Indians want to trade him. So I, now if they're out of the race, you know, by the trade, de trade deadline, then maybe. But for me, if the Indians wait till then, they're not going to get as much for him as they could now because he's got two years left on his contract. You know, one, the second part is arbitration eligible, but still, it's it's still team control. He cannot leave. If the Reds trade for him now, he cannot leave for two years. And people say, well, we have to sign over $100 million. No, we don't have to sign him at all. You just trade for him, get him two years, hopefully win a World Series, and let him go. If he wants $100 million, then go on. And that's the thing I like about the Reds' contracts, too, is somebody saying, well, well, Castellanos can opt out after uh, this year. Fine. Have a great year. Opt out. Go get a whole bunch of money. That's what the Reds did last year. We had all these guys, you know, they're, oh my goodness, they're going to leave, they're going to leave. Okay, they left, and the Reds went and got other guys. That's what I think the new strategy for the Reds is, and I love it. I think it's great. I don't see the Reds signing a guy like Joey Votto for 10 years yet. I don't think that's going to happen because it, it, it can't work. It doesn't really work in baseball in, in general. I mean, the Phillies went and signed, uh, uh, I can't think of his name, uh, Harper, for Bryce Harper, what they do last year. I mean, Machado got signed by the Padres, what they do. I mean, baseball, you can't get your whole team around one guy. I mean, Carl Linder tried to do that in the uh, very first part of the 21st century where he had one of the, put the, uh, ever, thought everybody would go down to the ball game to watch Ken Griffey Jr. and Barry Larkin, and that's it. Well, that's not true because you can have two great Hall of Famers and you still lose 100 games. Nobody's going to want to go pay and watch it. I mean, I would hate to see Joey Votto in another uniform, but I don't see the Reds signing anybody for long-term contracts like that. I think it's going to be more short-term contracts like this, and I think baseball is doing that. More and more teams are going to do that, and there's going to be more and more guys that – they have, you know, one, two, con two or three contracts, and then they're free agents again. And then they try to get their best deal, and the, and the you know, the club cl clubs work it out. So, my point to all this was, I really think the Reds are going to be very good. Freddie Gallus, I think, is a very good, very qualified shortstop. He came out and said, it, and personally, he needs to improve on his on-base percentage, which he's right, especially for this team. We need guys that can get on base. If him and Vado and Aquino can get on base, you got Moose, you got Castiano, you got Suarez, you got all these guys that can knock them in. So we got enough guys that are RBI guys. We need guys on base, and that's where I think Freddie Galvis is going to change his role and change his, his mind thinking as to just getting on base instead of 
swinging for the fences. Anyway, that's my two cents on the Reds. They're playing today at 3.05. I cannot wait to opening day. Anyway, that's just sports, baby. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I, I keep saying Instagram. It's Instagram. Maybe somebody wants to start something called Instagram because I keep saying it. But Instagram, the Twitter handle is Jeff A. Trenopole, T-R-E-N-N-E-P-O-H-L. Like, subscribe, share. Tell all your friends about me. See you guys.